Hello there, everybody, and thanks for joining us today, or tonight as the case may be. I am Rick Martell, your host and uh, inventor of the electric uh, Lazy Susan. Uh, I stopped by at the uh, As Seen on TV store the other day. I do this all the time, Ken, because it's fun. Anybody here allergic to orange? Okay. Look at this now, Ken. Da -da -da. Smells like we're walking in an orange grove a little bit yeah. out by your house. I Ken, bathed before I came. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> Ken Jones is my uh, guest tonight and today. Author of a wonderful, wonderful book, if I may put this in here. It is called Waldo. And Waldo is the name of your uh, now deceased uh, Labrador retriever, but uh, a wonderful story not only of the dog and uh, how the dog's manner influenced your life, mm -hmm. uh, but your struggle after a, a kind of a rough divorce, building a house, and and uh, deciding on whether you wanted to uh, pursue a suit on plagiarism of one of your mm -hmm. works as well. Mm -hmm. Ken, how did you uh, come up with the idea of Waldo here, other than Waldo itself? Well, the dog set the example, I think, that, that I learned from him. You can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. Uh, this, old, this young dog taught me a few. Isn't that something? And, uh, very appreciative of the, the time that he was with me. But since the death of the, you picked up some other uh, pets now. And what are oh, their yeah. names? I oh, love yeah. these names. I've got, well, the uh, Virginia Woof. Virginia Woof. Uh, Jean Paz, P A W S, Sart, yeah. and Vic Tar Hugo, the mm. Black Lab. They're all Labrador my. retrievers. My, my, my. Yeah. Uh, when you, uh, I guess it's pretty obvious with the, in the book you're uh, coming off of a, a divorce and you're trying to select some property to live on and build on. And I guess, what was it, three years, you lived in a leaky, airy trailer with no electricity, no running water, as you were building your own property, your own house? It was probably a little, well, without electricity, three years. Yeah. And I, there was a couple more years before I actually inhabited the house. But it was a oh, uh, ground up, one man job until I got to the second story roof. You did it, though, really about 99% by yourself, did you not? Up to the, up to the second story. But, and it's true, though, didn't you, Ken? You continued writing all this time. Oh, yeah. Your oh, yeah. Day. I have, had a little laptop. My big yeah. computer was in the basement corroding. Yeah. Uh, I have a basement in the house. But I had a laptop, and I used that in the trailer. And, of course, it had batteries that could recharge. So that, uh, And I had a generator. Yeah. And so I would recharge it when I had the generator on. Now, Waldo isn't your first effort or your first success, though. You were a writer for years and traveled to Europe. As a matter of fact, was it in Pamplona, Spain, that you want, uh, met uh, James Mishner? Yes, yeah, sure was. Tell us about that. What was that like? Well, that, I was just getting started then. And yeah. uh, my uh, success has been sporadic, as writers often experience. And I, I had decided after college that uh, I wanted to go to Africa. And uh, on the way to Africa, I went to Europe and we did a little roaming around in the days when they, the people were hippies, and I was oh, kind sure. of a kind of a clean hippie, and ended up in. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> well, with uh, the lady that was to become my wife, uh, and we ended up in Pamplona during San Fermin, and that was at a time when uh, James Michener's book Iberia was on the bestseller oh, list, yeah. and uh, we were talking about it one night at a restaurant, and the lady at the table next to us leaned over and said, "Do you know if James is here yet?" And because she heard us talking about the book Iberia, mm -hmm. and no, I, I didn't. I, he hadn't checked in with me, yeah. James. Who? And she says, Mishner, he's coming. You know? No, he, he didn't tell me. <laughs> uh, and she said, Well, we're going to be down in the uh, uh, plaza uh, tomorrow afternoon. Please join us. And I'm wow. I was just getting started. I had never written for publication, and to be invited in a table where the ex people from Hemingway days and and from the book Iberia. It, it was magnificent, and of course, James Mishner well, was there. And later on, he did assist you in ways, did he oh, not? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that, he was very, well, uh, he was writing a book at the time, unbeknownst to me, and in the book, The, uh, the Drifters, there's a character from California that, quote-unquote, is avoiding the draft, who, goes, who he meets in Pamplona, Spain, and goes oh. on to Africa. Well, I got my draft notice in Nairobi, Kenya, and I did go. I, I, did, I, I fought the Vietnam War in San Pedro, California. I, I wanted to mention uh, as well, uh, this book, it's, it's short, it's a fast read, but it's very, Thank well, you. Thank very you. well done. Thank you. Uh, and it's very, very funny. Can I read just a couple of little excerpts Absolutely. here? Or, or better yet, why don't I have you read? Oh, Lord. <laughs> if you would, the, the highlighted numbers. I don't think it needs a preamble, um, actually. Uh, just the highlight? Yeah, I love this. Being cut from a Little League team is excellent preparation for dating after divorce. <laughs> All right, page 14, if you flip a couple oh, there. Okay. I, this is, I, I wasn't prepared for this. I know you weren't. 
They came with pedigrees that would impress Russian doormen and price tags that would lift the brows of German car salesmen. I was not interested in paying for a dog in installments concerning buying a Labrador Retriever yeah. with AKC registration. While the puppies were not free, they were at least being offered at Volkswagen and not Mercedes prices. Isn't that great? That's great. How long did it take you to come up with these ideas? Do you work at it real hard or does it come easy for you? Uh, things, it's kind of like sculpture. Mm -hmm. You start off with this blob, and I'm not talking about the writer, I'm talking about yeah. the idea. <laughs> Uh, and it, it, you just hone it, and things, images come to you. Uh, the uh, analogy with German cars and the high price tags yeah. and that, that kind of thing. And it works so good. There's one other I wanted to read here very quickly, if I could. It's out of context, but you'll get the idea. If you expect the best success, prosperity, you will more often get it than if you anticipate the opposite. So you have to have a positive outlook, do you not? I hope so, and yeah. I think Waldo taught me a lot about that, yeah. too. Uh, and, and what are you doing now? Are you working on another book, Ken? Oh, there's a sequel coming. I, as I uh, was thinking on the way out here today, or down here, uh, I live about 70 miles north of San Luis Obispo, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a day doesn't go on without events. And writing this, and there is a sequel, and it might be entitled something on, on the line of uh, how not to start a winery. Uh, <laughs> That's been rough for you, has it not? Oh, it's, it's a challenge. It's just that's yeah. country life. Uh, one of the greatest phrases I heard was, when you, you know we, when you become accustomed to the country, when you hear a strange noise at night and you roll back over and say, I hope it goes away before I wake up in the morning. Best of luck to you on this. Let me know when you get another book going, will you, and we'll do this again. Robert, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming all the way here. I appreciate it. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go away. See any good movies lately? For all your printing needs, A&G Print and Copy. Color copies, graphics, bindery, laminating, and computer forms and checks. A&G Print and Copy are the business specialists. Mattress and Bed Superstore proves that the top name brands, Sealy Posturepedic, doesn't have to be expensive. Only $4.99 for a queen size set. Sealy is number one in sales and customer satisfaction surveys. Free delivery and setup, or free bed frame with qualifying purchase, and free removal of old bedding at Mattress and Bed Superstores in the Laguna Village Shopping Center, San Luis Obispo, and Albertson Center in Atascadero. But hurry, sale ends soon. The Box Express carries boxes for shipping or moving. UPS, FedEx, private mailboxes, notary service, packaging supplies, and as a utility pay station. Go see Lisa at Box Express. If dedicated, high-level personal service is important to you, when you're ready to buy or sell coins, stamps, gold, or silver, then California Coin & Stamp is your store. You'll find Allen & Lois Crawford there to help you six days a week, and you can find them at 253B Granada Way, San Luis Obispo, off South Higuera, between Tank Farm Road and Prado Road, or give them a call at 541-8775, 541-8775, and tell them Rick sent you. For all your photo processing and enlargements, come to Photo Plus at 1229 Grand Avenue, Arroyo Grande. Call 481-4436. That's 481-4436. Very pleased to have my next guest. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Uh, you have changed. Uh, too, too many camera shots in your life here. Uh, my guest is my uh, co-director here on Rick at Night. Abe Perlstein is here. Abe, good to see you on this side of yeah. the camera. Let me give a little background on you, if sure. I may, first of all. Uh, Abe has been involved, uh, first of all, he worked in Hollywood for over 20 years as a photographer, doing over 100 feature films, 50 television series, 100 commercials, and some 100 uh, music videos over a 20-year span. Now he's living the good life on the Central Coast, but is available for events, uh, video, as well as still photography, and I specialize in 
three-dimensional stereo photography. You, sp you specialize in a, a little different uh, look at uh, people and things as well. And we're going to give you some examples right now. So let's start off. What do you have here for Well, us? this is the very <laughs> first film I worked on in 1984. Uh, this man lost his head on a film called Reanimator. Yes, That's actor that. David Gale. And uh, That was see. his last movie, wasn't it? Uh, it might have been. Yeah. Uh, this is from a television show called The Single Guy with uh, Jonathan Silverman and, and Ernest Borgnine. Uh, that was on for a couple of years. Saw so Ernest last night on Walker. He's 86 years old. Looks good. Yeah, he, he yeah, is a he great really guy does. to work with. Okay. Paul Rood has been in a bunch of films lately. He starred in Clueless. He was that was just one of his first starring roles. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, Dennis Leary and uh, uh, Christopher Lambert in a film called Gunman, which was shot in Mexico. Which one is Leary? I couldn't tell. Leary's on the left. Leary's the on that show now, isn't he? Is uh, they, uh, they canceled it, the job, or they, they pulled it off oh, for a while. Oh, that's too bad. It's I funny. liked it too. Yeah. Uh, and here, Christopher Walken from Prophecy 2, uh, he's effectively a very creepy character in that film. Great in The Deer Hunter, wasn't he? Yeah. And this is uh, Jessica Lange. She won the Academy Award for Blue Sky. This yeah. was, uh, she played a, a, a character going through all sorts of uh, changes. I thought she should have won again for Rob Roy and maybe even Titus. My, my, she, uh, oh, she was she's great come a long Titus. way since King Kong, you know. Yeah. What else do you have? There's there? a nice shot of her. Um, I worked on a film called *The Wonderful Ice Cream Suit*, which was by the same director as *Reanimator*. Uh, from left to right, we have Isai Morales, Clifton Gonzalez, Gonzalez, Joe Montaigne, uh, uh, Gregory Sierra, and, a, and an extra there. And uh, Isai Morales is the uh, new lead uh, detective lieutenant on Right, and that's him again movie. playing the guitar here. He also sings in that film, *The, the Wonderful Ice Cream Suit*, which Wonderful is available as a rental. Suit. Here they are again. Who was the uh, star, Edward James Olmos? Or right, right. Okay. And, uh, well, actually, they all were the star. Okay. And now, uh, here's, uh, here's Joe Montaigne from that show. Uh, this, these were all uh, special shots for posters and what have you. Wouldn't know that was him. That's uh, Mario Van Peebles mm -hmm. from Gunman. Built a lot like I am. Yeah. You notice that? And Dennis Leary here. Uh, this, this is my, uh, the, 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 the sort of the men the men page. We didn't get Dennis. Can you go back to that? We didn't get Dennis? No, here okay. we go. Okay, here's Dennis Leary yeah. with his gun. Uh, and uh, here we have, uh, uh, we have uh, Edward. Edward James Olmos. He's wearing all white, a little tough to pick him up. Uh, the gentleman from the wonderful ice cream suit. Now, I think you might recognize this character here. You have here. to go back to that again. We missed it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hold it. Give it a little more time if you can. There you go. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great yeah, little film if you have a chance shot, to see too. it. Uh, you might recognize this gentleman here. You recognize him? Uh, this is Brad Pitt's second film. Good it's Lord. It's called Across the Tracks. He's really a fine gentleman to work with. Uh, Jared Leto. This was a special shot from a, uh, a Showtime series I worked on called, uh, uh, what was it called? I don't oh, know. Oh, I forgot. Okay. Well, that's not, not so important. You need that one? All right. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Eric Roberts. Uh, I've worked with him on three films. He makes more movies than Michael Caine. John Lithgow, who does the voice for uh, the new movie Shrek, he, yeah. for Lord Farquaad, uh, great actor. Finally uh, died with uh, Third Rock for the Sun. That finally ended after seven years, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Stephen there. Baldwin. This is from Threesome, which was a pretty big hit for uh, TriStar Pictures. Stephen the Middle Brother, or do you know? I don't know. It's like five or yeah. nine of them, I guess. And this yeah. is uh, our clueless star here. Uh, 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 oh. Yes, Eric Ralph. Roberts? Uh, no, this is not Eric Roberts. Okay, you were <laughs> this, pointing is, to him. this is Alicia Silverstone. Oh, yes. Yes. And uh, here we go. We have uh, uh, John Savage. This was a, a shot here of a, a courtroom drama I worked on with him. Another great uh, movie was Deer Hunter for him. Yeah, that's true. Marina Sirtis from Star Trek. This was a, a horror movie that she worked on. And then we have uh, another angle on. on uh, Jessica Lang. That's a great shot of her. I love her. She's just is. such a, a beautiful. What was person. she like to work? Uh, was she? She easy was always to in character, shoot? never went out of character. Really? And the character is just a, a crazy character. And Tommy Lee Jones plays her husband. Oh, yeah. I'll get some more shots of film. that, actually. That's a great film, actually. Now, these, okay. uh, these are just a variety of other shots. Now, this dig this, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Another yeah. guy who doesn't get any respect. Yeah. Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. Uh, this is Josh Charles and Laura Flynn Boyle from Threesome. Yeah. Another shot from Threesome with Stephen Baldwin on the left. Okay. And again from Threesome. This was used in a lot of uh, video promotional publicity stuff. 
This is a, a shot from uh, Blue Sky with Tommy oh, yeah. Lee Jones and Jessica Lange. And uh, more portraits of them here on this page. Another good shot. Yeah. Oh, that's great. You know, the black and whites really do show up nice, don't they? Yeah, they, they sure really do. do. This was a shading. poster I did for uh, Hot Shots with uh, Charlie Sheen. Oh, yes. Mind you. And uh, I worked on a film called Screamers. Uh, Peter Weller played the lead character in this. It's, uh, it's out in, all these films are on video. It took place in Montreal. It was the coldest shoot I ever worked on. It was literally minus Ooh. 20 degrees. All my cameras froze. You remember him in Buckaroo Banzai? Oh, yeah, that was yeah. a very funny film. Yeah. Here's right. Brad Pitt from that, that first film with, Eric, uh, with Rick Schroeder on the left That's playing Rick brothers. That's Rick Schroeder, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, this is Mara von Peebles and Christopher Lambert again from Gunman. Shot in Mexico. Great film to work on. I bet that was fun at that. Uh, another scary Christopher Walken and, and uh, upcoming uh, rising star Brittany Murphy. She's played uh, in a bunch of films lately. I can't mm -hmm. remember any of them. Here is that first film again with, uh, this is an interesting story. This is David Gale. He was the lead actor, one of the lead actors in Reanimator, which is this film. And uh, he was a cigarette guy. He always liked to smoke cigarettes. And in between shots, his head is in a pan. Mm -hmm. His head is in a pan, so the, this, this it's prop guy, <laughs> it's in a pan. You see, it's in a pan on the desk like this, and the guy's working on oh, his I head. See it. So yeah. he'd have to hand him cigarettes in between shots so he would, you know, he would be able to smoke. He really had the habit, huh? And he died from cancer. Oh, well, that happens. Another got about 30 seconds movie. here, buddy. Yep. Okay. Yeah, what well, here we, we can do uh, a couple of other You've shots. You've got so much stuff, I'm going to have to Yeah, it's really, back. really tough. That was Kevin, uh, what's his name? Uh, can't think of his name. White-haired guy. Oh, Kevin McCarthy. Yeah. McCarthy, yeah. And Jennifer Blanc, a nice shot. That's David Arquette and and uh, Salma Hayek. Oh yeah. She yeah. Did, she did pretty well, didn't she? As did he. Yeah. Let me tell you, uh, the phone number will be up there: five two eight eight five eight five. If right. you're interested in using the talents of this uh, extraordinary cameraman, either video or still camera. Yes. And it was a pleasure. We'll do this again because I yeah, know you good. have a lot loads of more. Thank you very Thank much, you. Abe. Okay. Thanks, we'll sir. be right back. Don't go away. Here at the Computer Junkyard, we offer used and refurbished computers, printers, complete systems, motherboards, hard drives, keyboards, mouses, and various cards like sound, network, and video cards. You name it, if it goes into a computer, we're likely to have it. Home Appliance Center is your one-stop local superstore for all major appliances. Family owned and operated since 1985, Home Appliance Center features factory authorized sales and service of all major brands including Maytag, Whirlpool, KitchenAid and GE. Plus you can save money on as-is appliances, all with full factory warranties. Same day delivery and service in most cases. So come to Home Appliance Center at 951 Grand Avenue in Arroyo Grande and have a honey of a day. For great food and a cheery atmosphere, try the new Station Grill for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Burgers, chicken, deli sandwiches, salads, and more. Station Grill at the corner of Highway 1 and Grand. Adjacent to the rail station in Grover Beach, call 489-3030. Ladies, browse through the wonderful selection of affordable fashions at Lay Boutique. 60% new, 40% pre-owned merchandise, 100% affordable. Everybody's shopping at As Seen on TV, the most unique store on the Central Coast. As Seen on TV stocks everything you'd like to order from TV infomercials for less. There's no shipping and handling costs, so you save money. There's no waiting, and you can check out the product before you buy. Come in and browse at As Seen on TV, open seven days a week in the Ralph Shopping Center, 871 Oak Park Boulevard, Pismo Beach. As Seen on TV, call 481-3776. My guests are the uh, subject matter of this book, uh, Luci Fa. It's Double Luck, uh, written by Luci Fa and Becky White, and Karen Grensick, uh, who is a court reporter and a dear friend of this gentleman over here. Thank you both for coming on board today. Well, thank you, Rich. Uh, it, this is an amazing story. Uh, I read it in about two and a half days, and uh, it, in case you don't know about it, ladies and gentlemen, you will because of the book fair and because it's, it's a hot item right now. Double Luck is this gentleman sitting across from me, and it's, uh, it tells of his growing up in China and the trials and tribulations of being tossed back and forth around your relatives, and uh, no one could either afford to have you or wanted to take you aboard. Uh, of 
cold, hungry nights and days and, uh, and rising above it all. And I mm -hmm. think uh, the story is really wonderful. And now, uh, uh, many of you know, he is the owner of the Coffee Pot Restaurant in Morro Bay. Now that we've established that, okay. let you. me ask you, first of all, if I may, Lucy, did, did, was it difficult for you to, to uh, dredge up these pretty horrible experiences you went through as a child again as you related them to both Karen and then later to uh, Becky? Yes, it is uh, very difficult, and uh, just like uh, when I told the story to uh, Karen and Becky, like you relive one more time uh, your childhood. It's a it's a very pain uh, uh, experience, but at the same time I feel it because of that uh, experience it make me uh, become much much a stronger person, in physically, mentally, uh, many other ways. So I'm glad I had that things. Uh, did happen to me. It would have been easier if it wasn't quite that severe, though, would it uh, not? Absolutely, yeah. yes. And, and isn't it true that uh, through it all, uh, in, in your childhood days, the one person that you could rely on, even though she could only help you to a certain degree, was your sister? Yes. Yeah. She, she was a very dear sister. And she's uh, every time when I face a difficulty, she's always there for me. And uh, I remember as a little boy, she always tell me, she said, be strong, be strong. She always said you were lucky. Yes, in she spite said, of what yeah, you were going yeah, through, yes, she always said yeah. you were lucky. Yes, uh, she think I'm lucky. But Karen gets tears in her eyes. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> I get tears in my eyes. You really do, don't anything. you? No. Yeah. Well, she loves he this man. He still thinks that. he's very lucky. I mean, through the whole thing, he believed he was lucky. He's, yeah. he it, says isn't it all that something? The time. Yeah. 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 Now, how did you get involved with this, Karen? Oh, he's just so dear to me, and he's so special. And people, I just love people, and I love their life stories, and I love. Um, especially people who've been through difficult times and make a good life for themselves. So he is the epitome of everything that yeah. I love. So one day we were sitting, um, sitting at a barbecue together and, and we were chatting and we, I told him about a venture that I had just started and the very next day we were talking about his life story so I went over to his house and started recording his life story on my court reporting machine. Oh my. So that's how it started. And for six weeks he cooked me a lovely dinner every Wednesday night, poured okay. me a glass of wine and then started talking. Hey, not bad. <laughs> not that beauty. And, and what, uh, what was the final thing that made you decide, heck, this could be a heck of a book? I don't know. <laughs> it just... It just was. It there was had just to be one of those things there. that had no. It was just one of those things that just had to be, and there was no. Yeah. There's no. People say, "Why did you do it?" It's like it just had to be. There was no gray. And like there was one illustrator I listened to one day, and she said, "They said, why do you work 12 hours a day? Why do you not spend any time with your friends?" And she just says, "I'm driven. I just have to do this." And I felt that way about his project. Isn't that something? It some just had to be. And really, you made some extraordinary uh, <laughs> giant jumps in this. I mean, uh, over a period of a, a very short time, really. You got Holiday House, a New York publishing house, to take take you aboard. Uh, the book looks great. The cover is great. Uh, the story is magnificent, and they are publicizing you right now. I mean, mm -hmm. they're pushing you out mm -hmm. there. Uh, I mean, I even got a copy from him. That's really unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what's the next next step for you? Now, I, now I understand that you're going to be at the book fair coming mm -hmm. up, right? Yep. I'm and that know. date is when? The June 9th. June 9th. At uh, uh, Mi Mission Plaza. Okay, there will be a lot of local authors there, Catherine Ryan Hyde and uh, yeah. many, many others Dave will be there. Penn. Yeah. Um, and I understand also that you are donating the proceeds of the book. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the Holiday House gave me a 40% discount, so each book of the, the shipping tax, uh, so I were needing $7 per book. If I sell 7,000 books, well, I would be needing almost $50,000. So that $50,000, every single penny will go to needy uh, ch uh, children locally, uh, uh, education. Oh, that's yes, wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And also, uh, you made a trip back, what, in 96 to see your sister? Yes, I did. Back to Communist yeah, China? Yes, yes. What was that like when you saw her again after all those uh, years? It, it's, uh, well, see, what happened, uh, well, I was, as a little child, I skipped from, uh, uh, out of mainland China to Hong Kong mm -hmm. to Taiwan. Uh, but uh, Taiwan was a, uh, is a under another system, so we are not allowed to uh, any make any contact to, to come into China until I came to this country, which is uh, 1986. Yeah. So by then I was American citizen. And I feel it's time to uh, contact uh, my sister, my, my dearest sister. So what I did, I wrote a little note to uh, Washington D.C. Uh, uh, the Chinese consular. So two weeks later, they they. They, they find me this address. The address is basically remembered by uh, eight years old. That was about 30-some oh. years old. Isn't that something? So then 
Was she was she excited to see you as you were her? She was very excited. Yeah. I and, so. uh, first we write letters back and forth mm -hmm. for a little while, and uh, she tell me all these things. Luigi Fa, you had a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, attitude all your life, and it's paid off for you finally. I just have a couple of seconds. I wanted to remind everybody of the book fair. You'll both be there along yes. with Becky White. Along with yes. Becky, we all right. get her there. Remember the money from the book. It's called Double Luck is going to charity, and I think that is very, very thoughtful of you. And uh, I, I just want to tell you something. Uh, it's a book of inspiration. It really is. I don't know too many people that could overcome as you have. And I pay you the highest compliment that I possibly can. And I thank you both for coming well, on the show. Thank you, Rick. Thank Good you. luck. Thank to you very much. Well, you, you, don't need, you already have double luck. We'll be right back with the uh, song spot. Don't go away. Come to Oceano Nursery for a unique experience. See our beautiful variety of indoor and outdoor plants, trees, and shrubs, hanging baskets, and one-of-a-kind garden art. Check out our huge selection of antiques, statuary, fountains, and unique gifts. Browse our extensive rock yard, specializing in landscape rock and gravel. Visit Oceano Nursery, Highway 1 at 13th Street, two blocks north of the Great American Melodrama. Oceano Nursery, more than just a nursery, a unique experience. Call 489-4456. Advanced Hearing Aid Center in San Luis Obispo offers digital hearing aids for the same cost of conventional hearing aids and satisfaction is guaranteed. If you think you have a hearing problem, call Alex today for a free hearing evaluation. Don't go a minute longer having to ask people to repeat themselves or having difficulty in hearing people over the phone. The price is right, and the time is now to see Alex for a fitting to begin better hearing at Advanced Hearing Aid Center, 628 California Boulevard, Suite B, in the California Medical Center. This song goes way back to 1952. Frankie Lane recorded it. I believe for every drop of rain that falls a flower grows I believe that somewhere in the darkest night a candle glows I believe for everyone who goes astray someone will come to show the way I believe, I believe above the storm, the smallest prayer will still be heard. I believe that someone in this great somewhere hears every word. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf, or see the sky then I know why I believe every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky then I know why
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. I should tell you, we uh, taped this show on uh, Sunday. This happens to be on June 10th. It will play back on the, the week of the 17th on Sunday at 8 o'clock in the evening, Monday at 7, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 in the morning, and Fridays at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so you might tell a friend. And then uh, call me and remind me when it plays, if you would. Uh, my first guest tonight, a uh, gentleman that is the uh, director of sports at KSBY, Action News. His name is Dave Allis, and we have a lot to talk about. Dave, thanks for coming on the hey, show. Hey, Rick, thanks for having me. Good to see you again. Yeah. Last time I saw you, we were doing the uh, Dave Congleton show, I believe. That is correct. Yeah. And the purpose was to talk about the Martell Cup. That is right, golf but tournament. I can't believe that a year has gone by already. It has gone by rather quickly, hasn't it? It has, it has for me. Um, let's find out a little bit about you, and then we'll get into okay. the, uh, the golf bit here. First of all, I'd like to know, maybe the people would like to know about you, where you're from, where you worked before you came to uh, KSBY. Well, I did my growing up here in California, up in Northern California, in Marin County. And uh, I left California for school back in uh, Syracuse University. And then I moved back to California before getting my first on-air job in Rapid City, South Dakota. Ooh, it's a cold country. Yeah, it was pretty cold. And I'll tell you what, though, it was pretty nice. I, uh, I had intended to go there and maybe spend a year cutting my teeth in television, maybe getting a little bit better and moving on to my next job. And it turned into almost four years in Rapid wow. City. Uh, I was really enjoying it. it uh, the winters were cold, but they weren't too cold, and the summers were beautiful. The problem was there was only about two and a half months of summer, and then it was so cold it hurt, again. Yeah. yeah, really short. But... Um, I was lucky enough, after working there for several years, to get a job here at, uh, in San Luis Obispo with mm -hmm. KSBY. And, you know, TV's a funny business. You don't really get to pick where you're going. No, you don't. And, uh, you know, I'd grown up in California, and I'd seen other parts of the country, some other parts of the country, and I really wanted to get back to California, but I didn't know when it was going to be. And so uh, I was up for a job in Tallahassee, Florida, and I got a call from KSBY, and they were interested, so I, I got really lucky. And what, did, uh, what kind of sports did you cover in, in South Dakota? Caribou shooting or what? Uh, you know, rodeo is really big oh, out rodeo, there. I know. You know, we, yeah. we, get, we get one rodeo a summer pretty much here uh, in yeah. Santa Maria a year. But, I mean, uh, you know, there's a rodeo every weekend in South yeah. Dakota, and, and that's big to cover. And and big and time, isn't it? Yeah, it is really big time. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, the rodeo cowboys are, uh, are some of the nicest people you'll meet. Uh, you know, you deal with athletes all the time, and you know people always talk about the, the egos that you have to deal with in dealing with professional athletes. And you know, these rodeo cowboys can make, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year doing what they do if they're if they're really good. But they are the nicest, most down-to-earth people you'll meet. It's amazing because they uh, suffer a lot of broken bones in the course of the oh, season. Do it's, they not? It's a rough, yeah. it's a rough sport. I mean, guys get injured, and you know they just have to ride through it. There is no, there is no injured reserve, and you know if they're not riding and and doing well, they're not getting paid, and it's you. expensive. What about uh, as a sports director, what is your favorite sport personally? You know, it's funny, I, I, uh, I like college sports a lot more than I like professional Dude. sports. Um, but I think the sport that I like the most is soccer. Really? And it's one that I don't, yeah, it's one that I don't cover all that much. Uh, because, you know, soccer... It's the most popular worldwide, I It's understand. the most popular worldwide, and I love the World Cup. Back in 1994, when the World Cup was here in the United States, I was actually living in Santa Barbara at the time. So I was able to go up to Stanford and down to the Rose Bowl for, uh, for several games and got to, got to see uh, soccer. I love it. I think it's a great sport. But it just has never really been a big popular sport yeah. here in the United States. And uh, even Major League Soccer, the professional uh, level soccer here, hasn't really caught on. So uh, we don't cover it a lot on television just because the, uh, it's not the, the gross guys. interest isn't there. You know, we end yeah. up covering basketball a lot more and, and you know, we try to cover the local high school events more. But, uh, really, I mean, once every four years, when the World Cup comes on, you know, You're for a there. month, yeah. I am in front of the television watching it. Have you ever played the game? Yeah, I played a little bit of it growing up. I uh, wasn't very good. But you know, I remember in the second, third, and fourth grade, I was in Emporia, Kansas, and we played soccer every day. I don't care if it was raining or there's snow on the ground or what. And wherever the ball was, I wasn't. Or I'd just get there and somebody <laughs> would kick it. I got so frustrated. I even remember that to this day just a couple of years ago, actually. Um, who's going to win the NBA championship? By the time you watch this, by the way, it may be over, but... That's right. I'd like to get your... I should say that right now the series is tied at one game That's apiece. That's true. Uh, you know, it's really hard to pick against the Lakers. Uh, yeah. I do think that they are more talented than the 76ers. Uh, and I, we were talking about this earlier. i got to give the 76ers all the credit in the world for what they've done. Uh, pushing the Lakers like they did in L.A. Um, you know, with three straight games coming up in Philadelphia, you think that... Uh, the Sixers have a really good chance, but it's tough to pick against the Lakers. Yeah. I really think the Lakers I will probably win, and my prediction would be six games. But, you know, game three is uh, 
is tonight. The, by the, the time you're watching this, yeah. we'll find out if he was right. Let's hope he is. I uh, very rarely am. <laughs> it is fun to watch Kobe Bryant, though, isn't it? He's, I, I mean, he's just amazing to watch, too. Well, you know, the Lakers and Laker fans right now are, are truly blessed to have two players, yeah. like Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant. Yeah. I mean, those are the kind of players that really come along once in a generation for a specific team. And to have two players like that, you know, on the Lakers at the same time, uh, it's one of the reasons why this Lakers team might go down you know, several years from now is one of the best to ever play. I hope so. Uh, if they can keep that together, if they can keep that tandem together and they don't let their egos get in the way, it could be something special for that. I that understand team. that Kobe is working on a slam dunk with his feet just to be different by next season. You never well, know he's, what's going to happen. He's here. so talented, you never know. Oh, he really is. Okay, what is this thing here? Maybe you can explain this. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Martell Cup. This is the, uh, this is the cup that we play for, and I guess I should talk a little bit about what exactly yeah, the Martell Cup is. Yeah, what is the Martell? I'd like to know myself. The, uh, this is a competition that came up between uh, all of us at KSBY and our good friends then at KCOY. And I should say, even though that we are professional competitors, uh, our relationship is not very adversarial on a personal level. Yeah. We, we get along very well with the people down at KCOY. Yeah, you do. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a golfer. Not a very good one, but I golf quite a bit, and I golf with the people down at KCOY. And a couple of summers ago, uh, I was golfing with the, uh, the sports team there that is no longer there. Scott Reese has moved on to ESPN. Jeff Fischel now works at CNN. Yeah. But we had been talking about the possibility of playing a golf tournament, kind of like the Ryder Cup that gets played between the United States and Europe, kind of a, a match play team. And we were tossing the idea around. It was just kind of innocent conversation. And we were trying to think of what we would call this competition. And, and so we were trying to think of a legacy that we both shared. And the yeah, legacy that, that we do share is, is Rick Martelli, yeah. a broadcasting legend. Yes, yeah, so I was fired by both stations, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I, I, we're running out of time here. I just want to uh, mention this will be uh, June 30th. June 30th. We're doing it again. It's the second year of the Martell Cup. Okay. You will be playing. I'll I be will. playing. We'll be having people like Tony Coppola. Good. And he'll be there, and, and a lot of the people from KCOY. All uh, the personalities from uh, KCOY. I personalities from KCOY, the news people, and the production as well. That's right. So we're going to be Morro Bay, and it's in honor of the man, well, the legend. I appreciate that again. Uh, last year, I lost 15 balls in the cover on my uh, cart, the canopy on my cart, so maybe I'll do better this year. I'm sure Thank you, you Dave, for coming hey, by. Rick, Thank you very pleasure. much for this. I appreciate hey, it. No Tell problem. everybody I said hi over there. I will so do okay. that. Right. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go away, please. That's a nice-looking cup. <laughs> See any good movies lately? For all your printing needs, A&G Print and Copy. Color copies, graphics, bindery, laminating, and computer forms and checks. A&G Print and Copy are the business specialists. Mattress and Bed Superstore proves that the top name brands, Sealy Foster Pedic, doesn't have to be expensive. Only $4.99 for a queen size set. Sealy is number one in sales and customer satisfaction surveys. Free delivery and setup, or free bed frame with qualifying purchase, and free removal of old bedding at Mattress and Bed Superstores in the Laguna Village Shopping Center, San Luis Obispo, and Albertson Center in Atascadero. But hurry, sale ends soon. The Box Express carries boxes for shipping or moving, UPS, FedEx, private mailboxes, notary service, packaging supplies, and is a utility pay station. Go see Lisa at Box Express. If dedicated, high-level personal service is important to you, when you're ready to buy or sell coins, stamps, gold, or silver, then California Coin and Stamp is your store. You'll find Allen and Lois Crawford there to help you six days a week, and you can find them at 253B Granada Way, San Luis Obispo, off South Higuera, between Tank Farm Road and Prado Road, or give them a call at 541-8775, 541-8775, and tell them Rick sent you. For all your photo processing and enlargements, come to Photo Plus at 1229 Grand Avenue, Arroyo Grande. Call 481-4436. That's 481-4436. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we're going to uh, try and help uh, some of you out there in video land right now. We'll be talking with the author of a book called If I Only Have One Life, and that is Judith Pry, and one of her clients, and uh, I guess become a friend, Laurie Herndon is here Correct. as well on my extreme left. Ladies, thank you very much for coming on the show today. I appreciate it. You are also a professional speaker. You go out and uh, spread your message a little bit. That's right. 
And basically your message is how to improve your life, am I right? Yes, there's so many people that are uh, afraid to take that leap and go after their, their dreams. And so many people in the world that are so willing to tell them not to go after their dreams. But I'm here to tell them that they should, and they can, and they must. I understand that you've had several uh, different professions before you got into this. So you, <laughs> I sure did. You kind of spread yourself out, and you know what you're talking about now. <laughs> and you also uh, have uh, what you call a circle of success that you form now with several ladies that mm -hmm. uh, meet once a month, of whom uh, Lori is a member. Lori, how has that helped you so far? And I understand from what I've read about you, it really has. It really has. I moved up here to sort of start over about a year ago, and I have four children. I'm a single parent, and in my wildest dreams, I never thought I could own a house on my own, that I could purchase a house by myself, and that's happened since I've joined the group. And, and can, can you synopsize, if I could say that word, uh, how it helped? Well, because I never thought it was possible, it was something I wasn't even considering, oh, that I never even looked for. I see. And when they made me feel like anything was possible, as long as I believed in myself and believed in my dream, um, that made me feel it was possible. So I started getting, gathering information and seeing how I could accomplish that, and it worked, and I did. And, and did you do a lot of it through uh, uh, simply positive thinking and keep the negative out? Did, did that, is that a part of your philosophy or not? It is, but I would say that most people don't have um, someone who believes in them in their life. And that's what we do in the Which group. Which is a shame, isn't it? I, yeah. I think it's very yeah. sad. But it, and it makes such a difference in a person's life. And that's what we do for each other. We give each other support, we encourage each other, we brainstorm, and, um, and it escalates. Because once you, get, once you realize you can do one thing, then you start thinking even bigger. I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the, uh, well, this is the book, by the way, Annie, if we can get a shot of it. If I only have one life, Judith Fry is the author. Tell us about some of the, uh, how you came up with some of these ideas and how you put them into play for yourself. Give us a, a couple of examples if you could. Well, the first one that comes to mind is there's a chapter. It's probably my favorite chapter, and it's called Acting as If. And okay. even the president um, has to start being the president sometimes. You think <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there too much. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's true. So the president does have to start being the president one day, yes. correct? Um, and, and if you want to follow your dream, if you want to become something else in your life, you have to take that day and say, okay, today I am starting to be the president. And so I will tell people I'm the president, and I will act like a president, and then I will become the president. Sorry with you, I'm going to act like the vice president. But <laughs> I'm just kidding a little bit there. All right, so, that, so in other words, you, you picture in your mind uh, somebody who is successful, highly successful, and then apply your mindset to that. Is that am I getting that basically? Exactly. It? OK. One of the other things you say, uh, go after your biggest wildest and most wonderful dream. Now, how does a person who is uh, suffering from, uh, let's say, debts and a, a marital breakup, how do they do that? How do they pull themselves out? Is there any quick way? Suffering from what was the first uh, uh, Say a marital breakup. I'm really giving you a lot of problems That's here. Okay. Marital <laughs> breakup and financial problems, which seems to go hand in hand with that. That's true sometimes, yeah. yes. Um, the marital breakup, I would say to just take a deep breath, because I've been there myself, yes. actually and to start examining their lives, start looking at their options, and just thinking in terms of dwelling in the land of possibilities. I like that. Mm. That's nice. Now, when you ladies meet, and you meet once a month, and I guess there are seven of you at this point, am I uh, right? Yes. Uh, and, and all of them have uh, stepped forward in their lives. I guess that's one way of putting it, uh, better their lives already. Uh, when you get together, do you, um, do you just discuss the week uh, that happened before in each of your lives, and uh, what? what you may have accomplished to that point? Yes, that's exactly what And then exactly compare notes, am I, am I getting this right? Yes, well, you're supposed to check in. Okay. And see what you've accomplished since the last month. You get new assignments. We read from the book uh, something that's appropriate for what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We brainstorm for each other. And I will generally do a private coaching session for each of the people okay. in it. Um, we also uh, eat. And Lori, may, may I ask what you do? Uh, you're working with mother, obviously. With I'm an outside children. sales rep. Yeah. You're a what? Outside sales rep. Sales rep. Oh, sales rep. I'm yeah, sorry, sorry, I couldn't hear you over here. <laughs> you must be bouncing off. Uh, 
but locally, right? Yes. So you can get home with the kids and all that. Yes. And you have somehow come up with the idea and the funding. You've got your home now, so you're you're on the road to where you want to be at this point. Working right? on it, yeah. And I would assume that when you go back to those meetings on a monthly basis like that, that it gives you a, a kind of a recharge. Would that yeah. be how it works? Exactly. And, and, you, and you're also held accountable, so it makes you really want to accomplish as much as you can because okay. you're going to tell about what you've accomplished since the last All meeting. Right. And Judith, you, uh, when you wrote the book here, by the way, uh, where is this available? I should ask you that. Right now it's available um, because it's just published yeah, through uh, Amazon.com and BarnesandNobles.com and Borders.com. Okay, well, we'll put that up on the screen for them too. Terrific. Um, was it difficult to put it on paper? I know sometimes when it's in one's mind, it's a little difficult to clarify it in words in print. It was something that needed to come out. Just flowed out? It definitely yeah. did. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a professional speaker, uh, who do you speak in front of? What kind of groups? Um, well, the last one I did was the Five Cities Women's Network, and before that, the one I did was the uh, the Slow Business Women's Network. So you're Network. available for Absolutely. public speaking. Ladies, thank you very much for coming on the program. Enjoyed I hope it. this book is a, a big seller for you because I know it can help people. I really do. Thank you. And I wish you best of luck. Thank you so Congratulations much. Congratulations on getting your new house. Thank and you. And thank you both. Thanks a lot. Nice to see two pretty ladies on the show. <laughs> we'll be right back. Don't go away. Here at the Computer Junkyard, we offer used and refurbished computers, printers, complete systems, motherboards, hard drives, keyboards, mouses, and various cards like sound, network, and video cards. You name it. If it goes into a computer, we're likely to have it. Home Appliance Center is your one-stop local superstore for all major appliances. Family owned and operated since 1985, Home Appliance Center features factory authorized sales and service of all major brands including Maytag, Whirlpool, KitchenAid and GE. Plus you can save money on as-is appliances, all with full factory warranties. Same day delivery and service in most cases. So come to Home Appliance Center at 951 Grand Avenue in Arroyo Grande and have a honey of a day. For great food in a cheery atmosphere, try the new Station Grill for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Burgers, chicken, deli sandwiches, salads, and more. Station Grill at the corner of Highway 1 and Grand. Adjacent to the rail station in Grover Beach, call 489-3030. Ladies, browse through the wonderful selection of affordable fashions at Lay Boutique. 60% new, 40% pre-owned merchandise, 100% affordable. Everybody's shopping at As Seen on TV, the most unique store on the Central Coast. As Seen on TV stocks everything you'd like to order from TV infomercials for less. There's no shipping and handling costs, so you save money. There's no waiting, and you can check out the product before you buy. Come in and browse at As Seen on TV, open seven days a week in the Ralph Shopping Center, 871 Oak Park Boulevard, Pismo Beach. As Seen on TV, call 481-3776. That is a world-famous uh, sign there, the Hollywood sign in Hollywood, California. And my guest is uh, Abe Perlstein, uh, one of my co-directors here at the uh, studio on Rick at Night and Day, and a uh, very accomplished photographer, videographer, and we're going to look at some more of your work again. Hey, Rick. See. Uh, last, uh, last week we saw a lot of, uh, by the way, you're cutting my head off over there with that camera you have to watch. Okay. There you go. No, not you. Uh, a lot of your work last week with uh, Jessica Lang and Tommy Lee Jones. What do you have this time? Well, here we have, uh, I've worked in a lot of television shows and movies that were appearing on TV as well as feature films. This was uh, from uh, uh, a series called Rebel Highway. There were n many well-known directors. This is uh, one of the actors, David Arquette. Uh, uh, Alicia Silverstone was in here. Uh, Clueless. Clueless, yeah. Uh, Paul, uh, Joe Dante directed. These are two of his character actors that appear quite often in his films. Yeah. Uh, this was Jennifer Blanc. A lot of these shots are taken on the set and a lot of them are taken when there's a break in the action so we can get some good publicity and promotional shots. Here's David Arquette and Selma Hayek. Selma Hayek. Who was just voted uh, the most uh, sexy woman over oh, really? uh, Jennifer Lopez. Sexy or wow. beautiful or whatever. Yeah. Uh, this was another shot. This is Jared Leto. He's been in a lot of films lately. Alicia Silverstone. Uh, uh, Gregson Wagner. Uh, 
Gee, I forgot her Mario first name. Mario Peebles, isn't it? Uh, no, it no, isn't? but we'll go on to another picture. <laughs> I'm trying to see the monitor here, too. Uh, just, you know, various, oh, this is uh, uh, fire, uh, fire, Fireside, Michael, Michael, Michael Ironside. Ironsides. Just yes. All runs together now. He's an old, the... Uh, Michael York. Now, do you remember the first movie that made him a star? Wasn't it Tom Jones, or no? Maybe it was. I thought it was Logan's Run, but he... Oh, well, Logan's Run, yeah. yeah. And this is uh, Jennifer Blanc and... And, uh, oh, geez, I'm forgetting all these people's names, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay, go a little slower uh, now. You're yeah, this me. was, uh, actually, I'm just going to pass by these. Too much coffee. Now, here's day. a, uh, yeah, here's too much coffee. All right. This is a 3D shot. So what we have here is, is oh, yeah. we can see it's a lenticular shot. This is some of the things I've been working on. It's a two-image image. When you twist your body, well, you cool. actually see something different. Of course, it's in 3D. We can't see it in 3D here on the... Now, you offer movie. that on your website, though, do you not? Yeah, I'm, I'm appearing as a featured artist on a website called www.ddd.com. If you're interested in knowing about that, uh, we'll print my telephone yeah, number. Yeah, let's do the phone number. It'll be the easy. phone number is 528-8585. And I'll tell you all about that. You've been doing that for a while, though, haven't you? Yeah, I've, I've been shooting 3D since how, 1991. How come you skip that picture there. Of the uh, this? Well, okay, I guess we could show that. <laughs> uh, this is just a unit shot from a film called Breathing Room. I, I, it's one of my favorites. It's really quite funny. That's why I knew you shouldn't have skipped that. And this is an outtake from the uh, wonderful ice cream suit, which was a fairly good-sized video hit for Buena Vista Pictures. Uh, Joe Montaigne, Isai Morales, uh, Edward James Olmos, uh, and this was the box cover for that. A wonderful ice cream suit. Now hold it there a minute and I'll tell the people where they'll see these uh, actors. Almost in, almost anywhere. He's in a lot of uh, movies now. Joe Montaigne has recently played Spencer in Thin Air on A&E. Uh, Isai Morales is the new uh, leader of uh, NYPD Blue. Right, okay. and he was also uh, in uh, La Bamba. Exactly. I also okay. did a lot of music photography, uh, music photojournalism. Uh, this was at the 1982 US Festival. This was a drunk marine sliding in the mud. Quite an incredible feat. See that. And the monkeys here receiving the key to the city in Hollywood. When was this, do you recall? Uh, 1987. 87. Oh, I uh, Leonard Cohen doing his best Ronald Reagan imitation. Folk singer. Will. Joe Jackson. Nancy and I. Okay. Uh, Bob Dylan here in a don't go too fast and, uh, now. An interesting shot from... Is that uh, Bob Dylan? That's Bob Dylan. Right. This is Tom Waits. Oh, yeah. Now, where and, did you... Uh, that, that was during a concert. That I was during a concert in a very sleazy bar in Hollywood called the the Upside Down Club, as I oh, remember, or the Cathay, the Cathay de Grand. Here, I'll get you... Uh, my kind of bar. Something, it uh, like uh, let's see here. Okay. This was uh, Bob Dylan and George Harrison and... Uh, wow. And... Uh, John Trudell here is American Indian activist and a poet, and Jesse Ed Davis, who played guitar with Bob Dylan, all appeared one night along with John Fogarty playing his John first Fogarty. Creedence Clearwater Revival song since the band broke up. He wow. said, the heck with this, I'm going to play these. Remember he had a lawsuit going where he oh, couldn't yes. actually play his own music? That. And uh, it was quite an evening, and Bob was really roaring drunk, and he kept falling off the stage. This was right before he fell off the stage. <laughs> you don't have any shots after, I guess. No, okay. no, actually, he, he actually fell off the stage. Uh, Stefan Grappelli, the, uh, the great uh, violinist who played with uh, Django Reinhardt, the Hot Club of France, oh, back yes. in the 30s, shortly before oh, he died. Yes. And, uh, That's a wonderful book. Yeah, let me show you some other. Klaus Kinski. Did you ever see Fitzcarraldo? Who? Fitzcarraldo, the film. No. Oh, it's a great film. He plays a lunatic in that film. A wonderful film. He's a uh, wonderful actor. He did some vampire films, as I recall. Too. James Brown, yeah, doing his uh, best Mick Jagger imitation, and uh, Stevie Wonder. Boy, that's a close-up on Stevie. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> I have yeah. about thirty seconds left here, Abe. Okay. Uh, just show that, if you will, and I'll tell the people the, the number to call again: five two eight eight five eight five. If you're interested in any videography or photography or three D which is really quite interesting when you can see it up close. Yeah, I'm specializing in three-dimensional stereo photography now. Yeah, I like it. Thank it's you. Really good stuff. Uh, and we have time to just show a couple more here. As I say, thank you for looking in. We'll be right back with the song spot. I have no idea what it is today, and thank you very much, Abe Perlstein. Weird Al Yankovic.
Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot, Al Rick. Holly. <laughs> yes. All right. We'll be right back. Come to Oceano Nursery for a unique experience. See our beautiful variety of indoor and outdoor plants, trees, and shrubs, hanging baskets, and one-of-a-kind garden art. Check out our huge selection of antiques, statuary, fountains, and unique gifts. Browse our extensive rock yard, specializing in landscape rock and gravel. Visit Oceano Nursery, Highway 1 at 13th Street, two blocks north of the Great American Melodrama. Oceano Nursery, more than just a nursery, a unique experience. Call 489-4456. Advanced Hearing Aid Center in San Luis Obispo offers digital hearing aids for the same cost of conventional hearing aids and satisfaction is guaranteed. If you think you have a hearing problem, call Alex today for a free hearing evaluation. Don't go a minute longer having to ask people to repeat themselves or having difficulty in hearing people over the phone. The price is right and the time is now to see Alex for a fitting to begin better hearing at Advanced Hearing Aid Center, 628 California Boulevard, Suite B in the California Medical Center. Home Appliance Center is your one-stop local superstore for all major appliances. Family owned and operated since 1985, Home Appliance Center features factory authorized sales and service of all major brands including Maytag, Whirlpool, KitchenAid and GE. Plus you can save money on as-is appliances, all with full factory warranties. Same day delivery and service in most cases. So come to Home Appliance Center at 951 Grand Avenue in Arroyo Grande and have a honey of a day. They say, call love, I just can't handle it. They say, call love, I must get rid of it. I read it, crazy little thing called love. Well, this thing called love, it cries in a great long night. It swings, it jives. It shakes all over like a jellyfish. You kind of like it. Crazy little thing called love. There goes my baby. Well, she knows how to rock and roll. She drives me crazy. Make a long road three thirds. Kiss me in a cold, cold sweat. So far, okay. Gotta be good. Relaxed. Get in, get on that track, take a back seat, hitchhike, take a long ride on my motorbike and get ready. Crazy little thing called love. How's it going, Joy? Huh? Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so calm. Ready for verse two? Gotta be cool, relaxed, get in, get on that track, take a back seat, a hitchhike, broke light on my motorbike and get ready. Crazy little thing called love. Here we go. Oh, this thing called love. I just can't handle it. Well, this thing called love. I must. Get rid of it, I ain't ready. Crazy little thing called love. Crazy little thing called love. Crazy little. Today, we're going to take a closer look at our viewing audience. <laughs> I like that. I told you it wouldn't work. Anyway, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, we have to have our little uh, as seen on TV spot here because I go there every week and just show you some of the buys they've got. This is really a good deal here. What is it? Can you see that in yes. here? It's a refill, ah. okay, for your uh, inkjet uh, printers. Need it. 
considerably cheaper than when you buy the carts. And what you do is play doctor. So you <laughs> <laughs> just inject this into the uh, cartridges you already have, and it's it's done. And it's like $39 something anyway. This oh, one, I'm right. not sure of. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is not an endorsement. Uh, but Mike Wilson tells me this thing is very popular, but I'd be a little cautious of it. It's a, uh, they say you can lose 10 pounds in two days with this Hollywood diet, but you can't take it if you smoke, if you're pregnant, if you're a human being. <laughs> no, I don't know. There are some restrictions, though, and they say see a doctor. One that says see a doctor, I'm, I'm not sure before you do it. Have you ever tried that, Anita? No, that's one I've missed. That's one you, <laughs> that's one you missed. <laughs> I've okay. missed it. Well, the Hollywood celebrity diet. Oh, they say it worked. Some fellow uh, lost 12 pounds in one day. That would scare me a little bit. <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> what is missing? I don't know. Anyway, he's got so many things over there. And I want to show you one other thing. I wanted to thank uh, two new sponsors in the show. The Sports Dome at 1312 Grand in uh, Arroyo Grande. Look what they have out now at the oh, Sports Dome. Aren't these clever? Very nice. I've never seen these before. What is it? It's a wallet. Ah. Now, let me show you what it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful leather wallet. Okay? You open it up there. It's got your team logo on it. Mm. And this is even better in a way if you happen to have a bank account. Oh. Uh, look at this. This is neat. Here's the 49ers. I like that. There's That's good. Cool, huh? Cool. Okay. That's available at the Sports Dome, uh, Dome along with uh, a lot of other uh, sports memorabilia you don't find anywhere else. So it's kind of fun. And uh, we're going to get with uh, Miss Etiquette now. I'm sorry it took so long to get into that, but this is business. We have, welcome back. Thank you. you. Very, very pretty. Thank you. You look very good much. in black and red. Shall we hop to it? Let's go. Okay. I read the questions, you come up with the answers, if at all possible, <laughs> if I can get through the question. Here's the first one. Is it improper to negotiate the price on a wine list in a restaurant? I like that one already. Is I it? called around because I thought maybe it's something that I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are some things I really don't know. But no, if, if the wine is a set price, that it's not a bartering situation yeah. here. You can do this, however, in the Orient. You may barter. To go. <laughs> <laughs> to save a few pennies. Yeah, yeah. You may barter whatever yeah. you like when you're in the Orient. So that's the answer to that. Uh, it, I know you can negotiate on a car and yes, possibly that's true. diamonds and jewelry. But, but not I food too, or beverages. Too bad in a way. <laughs> it would probably go up. Uh, if I negotiated, I'd lose. I've been asked by several young men questions about buying an engagement ring. The questions range from how much to spend as a proportion of the groom to be after tax income. Are you with us so far? Yes, of course. Okay, to whether the man <laughs> or woman should pick out the ring, to whether a lady should have the choice of whether to accept a family heirloom. I dimly remember that the custom when I became engaged back in 1874 <laughs> uh, was that a lady was grateful for any ring her gentleman gave her. But what, uh, what should they do there? Is there a rule of thumb for that? There is a rule of thumb. It's usually the minimum amount that a gentleman spends on an engagement ring is one month's salary. Really? Yeah, really? Didn't you know? Well, I never bought one for my wife. Oh. I gave her one of those little cigar bands. <laughs> it worked, uh, didn't it? You're, it worked, yeah, you're yeah. happy? Yeah. Roy Elroy Tan, <laughs> as I recall. And I told her, I said, you know, you don't want a diamond ring. Look how much better your hand looks when you have a gold band and your hand gets tan. I convinced her that oh, she that's believed very anything. Good. Yeah. Boy, has that <laughs> changed. Okay, a few years ago, I stopped sending much of my family and friend communication via email. Oh, this is a good one. I send e-greeting cards, e-thank you notes, e-gift certificates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. My mother informed me today that I'm being rude and inconsiderate by choosing the internet rather than paper and snail mail. What do you think? I what do you think? I think he's rude. Do you really? I do. It's terrible. It's terrible. It is quicker. It is quicker, but it's the written word. It's the fact yeah. that you got off your duff, you into the car, to a store, picked out a card, took it home wrote something in it, signed your name, addressed the envelope, put the stamp on, put the return address label on, and mailed it. I mean, it's a real Megillah, you know, that's yeah, Jewish yeah. for the entire story, but that's the way it's supposed to be. Perhaps we should change that. <laughs> that <sounds laughs> Which like part? The whole Megillah, no. <laughs> as you put it. All right, here we go, Anita. I have a question about business etiquette. My husband has a job which entails oh. a lot of socializing. My question is, his company does not invite spouses to black tie affairs. I feel this is totally improper. I've spoken to my husband and told him I feel it is an insult to the spouses to have our husbands and wives get all dressed in black tie and attend a, uh, an award ceremony or big dinners where I know the recipients are there with their spouses. Oh, I don't blame her for being hot. 
Ooh, she was very upset. And may I say this has been going on. This started in May, and I yeah. speak with her by email at least twice a week. I mentioned to her, told her, you find management. Make an appointment with management. Mm -hmm. Talk to management not about if you can attend, but when you may start attending black tie events with your husband. And perhaps one of the reasons they don't want spouses there is they're afraid that the spouse doesn't know how to act, can't dress. Oh, I know. And you assure them that, that, that you're in that society ring. You can do that. Well, that makes then sense. she wrote back to me and said, I have news for you. My husband is management. Oh, that's interesting. That and he interesting. went to a black tie event over yesterday, went to a black tie event because she emailed me this morning and said that she did indeed stay home. Oh, my God. Well, you know, years ago when I was a DJ in San Diego, they were sending me down on a cruise, a Princess Cruise on the Mexican Riviera. And uh, there was a contest, and I was taking a couple with me. And when I went in to... Uh, kind of finalized it with the general manager, he said, of course you realize you're, you can't take Stormy with you. I and, took Stormy with me. Yeah, good for yeah. you. I've got a question that I can't seem to find an answer to. I have this all the time. While attending <laughs> a sit-down wedding dinner, do the men take off their suit jackets or leave them on? Please help me out with this, okay? You, you leave your you clothes leave on, don't you? You leave your clothes on when you eat. It's not uh, a, it's we leave our clothes on. Yeah, course. leave your clothes on while you're eating. This was a black tie yeah. formal wedding reception. If at some point during the reception the, the groom, groom takes one off, okay. he gets to the microphone and, and he may say to people, Gee, it's hot it's in so here. It's so very that's hot in here, you may take your jacket yeah, that's okay. off. Right. Oh, that's a cool answer. <laughs> cool answer. Very good, I get it. In arranging the glasses for a dinner party at home, including multiple wine glasses and a water glass, what, oh boy, what is the order and to which side of the plate are the glasses aligned? You know that. I do? Yeah. Don't you? Can we get the answer after we take a small Please. break here? I have to think about this. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't go away. <laughs> See any good movies lately? Mattress and Bed Superstore proves that the top name brands, Sealy Posturepedic, doesn't have to be expensive. Only $4.99 for a queen size set. Sealy is number one in sales and customer satisfaction surveys. Free delivery and setup, or free bed frame with qualifying purchase, and free removal of old bedding at Mattress and Bed Superstores in the Laguna Village Shopping Center, San Luis Obispo, and Albertson Center in Atascadero. But hurry, sale ends soon. The Box Express carries boxes for shipping or moving, UPS, FedEx, private mailboxes, notary service, packaging supplies, and is a utility pay station. Go see Lisa at Box Express. If dedicated, high-level personal service is important to you, when you're ready to buy or sell coins, stamps, gold, or silver, then California Coin and Stamp is your store. You'll find Allen and Lois Crawford there to help you six days a week, and you can find them at 253B Granada Way, San Luis Obispo, off South Higuera, between Tank Farm Road and Prado Road, or give them a call at 541-8775, 541-8775, and tell them Rick sent you. Back with uh, Miss Etiquette, uh, Anita Shower is here, and we're trying to uh, uh, bring forth some edification on uh, etiquette really does matter. Etiquette matters. Etiquette like matters. Very Remember the question that I gave you before we ended the uh, last I segment? I do, but perhaps. Perhaps we, I should read it again perhaps. because I didn't understand it the first time. <laughs> In arranging the glasses for a dinner party at home, including multiple wine glasses and a water glass, what is the order and to which side of the plate are the glasses aligned, east to west? I have no idea. I really don't know. So this would be your water glass, which is right okay. next. It's the first glass you reach for. Mm -hmm. Next to the water glass is the white wine glass, followed by a glass for red wine. And then behind that, close to the water glass, is the champagne flute. Yeah, but where's my martini glass? <laughs> oh, that's what I want to know. Hey, we could put one of this, but <laughs> I'm going to try that. Everybody would be out. Never mind. You won't recognize me next time. All right. You're not going to do that. Let's see. <laughs> uh, received it. Uh, this one is a little confusing. I just looked at the top. Received an invitation to a 25th anniversary party. The party is to be at the home of a friend of the couple. Okay. 
Invitation indicated, indicated cocktail, 6.30, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no host dinner at 7.30. What is expected of us? I understand <laughs> what a no host dinner is. If we were going to a restaurant, what is expected at someone's home? Do we bring a salad <laughs> or a dessert? That's a great question. I loved it. I, I had to write her back and said, you know, I think you ought to call these people on the phone and see if that's really uh, what they meant. Yeah. Because what it's, it sounds like a very elaborate wow. Dutch treat event. Yeah. So I don't know what she did, but a no-host dinner means that you bring your own food. Sure. Why bother? I mean, why have this party? Absolutely. I've heard of BYOB parties, but not a BYOD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. We don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. Uh, that's, that's a strange one, though. By the way, uh, my wife, the only time she really gets irked at me is on our anniversary. I fly the flag at half staff. <laughs> <laughs> you bad boy. <laughs> Uh, my husband is a great cook, and he enjoys having friends over for dinner. It sounds like Hannibal Lecter, doesn't it? <laughs> he knows our friends enjoy salmon, so he prepares it really well. But he doesn't like salmon himself, so he wants to make something else like pork or some other main meat dish for himself and anyone else who wants to go along with, with him or the salmon. Is this rude, having more than one? I don't think that's rude. No, actually, she has a great husband Yeah, he's to taking do that. care of the guests and... Well, first of all, he's doing this event. And yes, he's taking care of the guests because he knows they all like salmon. Yeah. He doesn't care for salmon, so he's going to have pork roast, perhaps. Yeah, but he's also offering that to Right. He's terrific. Friend. What a great person. Oh, that's great. Let's get his address. Get we'll go over there for dinner. <laughs> Give him an A. The barbecue season is here. Okay. And here's another. I have been invited to attend a reception the 15th of the month. I was, oh, too late. Uh, I was wondering if I was supposed to buy a gift, whether or not I could attend. Oh, I see. Buy a gift, whether or not uh, they could attend the, uh, the party. What does etiquette dictate on this matter? I have no idea. I wasn't quite sure what kind of reception it was. Yeah, it doesn't really say, no, does it? Didn't. It just so says I, reception. I wrote back and said, is, is it a wedding reception? If it's a wedding reception, buy the gift. Send it in advance. If you don't go, there's no harm. That's true. That's true. Simple. Very simple. Some of these are really, really very simple. Three minutes. Okay, here we go. Uh, could you please share with me, Miss Etiquette, the proper etiquette for wedding presents? I've been invited to a friend's wedding, and I am bringing my boyfriend, but I have no idea how much to spend on a gift. Do I estimate how much it is costing them per person for the reception? Wow. It will be in New York City, by the way. And give a gift according to this price range, or <laughs> is there some other formula for gift giving? Some of my friends even thought they bring a guest only by a gift for themselves. What is that? This is a little confusing. Some of my friends, mm -hmm. even though they bring a guest right. only by a gift from themselves. Right. Oh, okay, I see. Boy, that is really convoluted a little bit there. Oh, yeah, what What's the I? answer? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> the question is, what she really wanted to know is she's taking her boyfriend. So first thing I wanted to know, did you get an invitation that says Miss Mary Smith and guest? Because if you didn't get an invitation that says, and guest, you're not supposed to bring a date to the wedding. So her question really okay. is, I'm going to buy a gift. Does, is the gift from me and my boyfriend, or is the gift supposed to be just from me? And then how do you factor the amount of the gift? <laughs> Boy, that's really confusing, <laughs> that's isn't it? Yeah. The gift is, comes from your heart. There's no yeah, set okay, amount. There's no set amount, I would right. think. Okay. You know, uh, marriage is just for people who can't get dates anymore anyway. I don't know what this is all There's about. There's nothing okay. out there. I am a single man. I was recently buying Mother's Day gifts at the cosmetics counter of a major department store. The young woman said she had a friend she wanted me to meet. Well, how brazen. I didn't, I, he didn't respond. I didn't <laughs> respond. He went on, though. I didn't respond. Oh. What an idiot. I am now curious. Should, oh, good Lord. Now should I go back now and discuss the matter with her? Is this proper etiquette? No, you go to the Dunce Hall of Fame. <laughs> you missed your opportunity. Isn't uh, that something? That, that's weird. No, I said, do not make a return trip just to find that out. Why don't you go over there again if you have to buy another gift? And if someone says to you, remember me, I offered to set you up with someone. If you still feel the same way and dating is very difficult for you, say that you Which would. It sounds like it is. It? You may have coffee with this lady who's proposing this, plus the young lady that she would like you to meet. Boy, you are good. You and are see good. if you like it that way. Okay. Right? Good Otherwise, answer. you're going to get yourself into something that may be very uncomfortable. Yeah, it sounds like it could. 
Well, it does happen, ladies and gentlemen. Short break, right back with more of Miss Etiquette. Don't go away. Here at the Computer Junkyard, we offer used and refurbished computers, printers, complete systems, motherboards, hard drives, keyboards, mouses, and various cards like sound, network, and video cards. You name it, if it goes into a computer, we're likely to have it. Home Appliance Center is your one-stop local superstore for all major appliances. Family owned and operated since 1985, Home Appliance Center features factory authorized sales and service of all major brands including Maytag, Whirlpool, KitchenAid and GE. Plus you can save money on as-is appliances, all with full factory warranties. Same day delivery and service in most cases. So come to Home Appliance Center at 951 Grand Avenue in Arroyo Grande and have a honey of a day. For great food in a cheery atmosphere, try the new Station Grill for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Burgers, chicken, deli sandwiches, salads, and more. Station Grill at the corner of Highway 1 and Grand. Adjacent to the rail station in Grover Beach, call 489-3030. Ladies, browse through the wonderful selection of affordable fashions at Lay Boutique. 60% new, 40% pre-owned merchandise, 100% affordable. Everybody's shopping at As Seen on TV, the most unique store on the Central Coast. As Seen on TV stocks everything you'd like to order from TV infomercials for less. There's no shipping and handling costs, so you save money. There's no waiting, and you can check out the product before you buy. Come in and browse at As Seen on TV, open seven days a week in the Ralph Shopping Center, 871 Oak Park Boulevard, Pismo Beach. As Seen on TV, call 481-3776. Back with uh, Anita Shower, Miss Etiquette, in part three. Uh, my sorority is sponsoring an etiquette workshop for a group of young ladies ages 15 to 17. We would like to teach them how to be effective hostesses. We have a banquet and would like them to be the servers slash hostesses. Please share any information that would be helpful. That was great. Uh, what, I don't even it know was, what the question is on that. How do you teach them? How do you teach? Well, I wanted to know if there was a format that they were going to go by all evening long. Do you have an agenda? So I had her send me the agenda. Was there going to be introductions? Were the young ladies going to escort the people to the tables? So you would have to know when to pull the chair out and have someone sit down. You have to know that you serve from the left and pick up from the right. I didn't know that. I think I did inherently, but uh, yes. Remember, we said you enter yeah. with Sophia Loren and you leave with That's Robert right. Redford, left, right. Yeah. That kind of thing. I needed to know if they were going to wear little outfits, things like that. So we did that. We did a whole. All that. It was wonderful. And they ended up at this uh, all-you-can-eat <laughs> Chinese restaurant in but San it, Luis Obispo. True. Only they just give you one chopstick. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's I all can you do can. That. That's all you can eat. Okay. Here we go. I met my boyfriend two months ago at college. In two weeks, I will be traveling to New York to visit. Boy, that was a quick one. I'll be traveling to New York to visit him. I will be staying with him in his parents' house. His family has a lot of money. They are millionaires. Mm -hmm. My family doesn't. Mm -hmm. We're a middle-class family putting children through college, so I do not have a lot of money. I was wondering what sort of housewarming gift I should get for the family. Maybe they ought to get her one. <laughs> get her. No, I told her to send flowers in advance. That's always good, huh? It's always perfect. And in advance. Well, yeah, send yeah. it so that when you get there, they've been there either the day before or they arrived that morning. And make sure you get a confirmation number. Yeah. And I also cautioned her not to sleep with him while she was visiting that house. Well, I should hope not. Right? <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> I wonder if that'll work, your advice there. Probably not. It's uh, only for an, a weekend. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah, behave for yeah, a weekend. Yeah, it's okay. Could you ever be... No, never mind. I have a group of teenage boys that are in need of learning proper etiquette from tipping to formal dining out. Here we go. Aside from going to a bookstore, where might I find all the information I need to teach the proper rules for becoming a young gentleman? There is a book called How to Be a Gentleman by John Bridges. That was my, one, my major suggestion. The other one, there's a book called Kids and Good Manners, mm -hmm. and it's a compilation of several books, five or six books, and it's really very good. How to Eat a, an Artichoke, When to Peel the Banana, How to Eat Soup, What to Do with Your Napkin. Hmm? 
how do you eat an arty choke? <laughs> an arty choke. Oh, it went down my throat and I arty choked. <laughs> do you remember that old joke? I, I don't. No, it's but that was joke. good. It's good. A choke, yeah. a joke. Do you, uh, do you uh, go from the, your bottom teeth or over your top teeth on your arty chokes? You squirt. Well, if you do it the way you... Show me. You no, know, if you do it that way, it's going to squirt out. Right? So turn the leaf over so it doesn't squirt out at anyone. Well, I never squirted out. <laughs> Believe it or not, I never did. You have to be careful with food. It will go everywhere. So make sure you have a bib on or a napkin Wait up a here. Wait a minute. My artichokes <laughs> don't squirt. <laughs> okay. Don't eat them. All right. Hey, do we have uh, any time left, Annie, or should I kick her out of here now? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just wanted to see what would be I'm like with this etiquette and see how she would get rambunctious. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. We have a client who has chosen a man of honor. Wait a minute. Read that I'm, again. Read that again. Oh, I'm going to. We have a client who has chosen a man of honor uh -huh. instead of the traditional maid of honor. Mm. Whoa. Ooh. Now, I'm not quite sure how he will walk back <laughs> during the recession. <laughs> Would it look out of place? In the <laughs> I can't read it. Would it look out of place? You read that. Where is it here? Get that camera off. Would it look out of place <laughs> if the man of honor walks back with the mother of the bride, and then you have yeah. the best man walk back with the groom's mom? The man of honor is the bride's brother, and the best man is the groom's brother. You have that? Oh. Since this is an untraditional situation, I'm not sure how to set it up. Please advise. <laughs> it can, <laughs> it cannot sorry, be. I just don't know. It this cannot can't be. be it. No. So that would be a, a, a non-traditional wedding. That's ridiculous. You don't want your wedding to be a circus. <sighs> so what I suggested is have your dad walk halfway up the aisle with you and then have your brother take over. That's one way that it's... Oh, that's very good. You may yeah, do it that good. way, or if you're really adept, you may have your dad on one side of you and your brother on the other side of you, and they both walk you up the okay. aisle. What okay. she wants is some to-dos for her brother. I but understand. you don't want your brother to be the center of a circus. All right. You know, marriage would be a lot easier if uh, women understood football <laughs> and men understood shopping. Uh, now, you have an email. We've got about 30 seconds yes. here, and I want to thank you again, Anita, you for coming much. on the show. We'll be doing this again very soon. People seem to like it, and, and I hope it helps. I'm not sure that it does. <laughs> Sometimes it confuses me even more. But uh, you, do, you have an email. You want to spew that out real quick? Etiquette mm -hmm. at juno.com. That's so easy, isn't, isn't it? it? It's etiquette, E T I oh, yes. uh, Q U E. Yeah, don't spell it with two T's or T T E at the end. Yeah, T T at the right. end. E T I Q U E T T E. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll Lovely. be right back with the song slot. Thank you, my dear. Thank I enjoyed you. it very much. <laughs> Advanced Hearing Aid Center in San Luis Obispo offers digital hearing aids for the same cost of conventional hearing aids, and satisfaction is guaranteed. If you think you have a hearing problem, call Alex today for a free hearing evaluation. Don't go a minute longer having to ask people to repeat themselves or having difficulty in hearing people over the phone. The price is right, and the time is now to see Alex for a fitting to begin better hearing at Advanced Hearing Aid Center, 628 California Boulevard, Suite B, in the California Medical Center. Come to Oceano Nursery for a unique experience. See our beautiful variety of indoor and outdoor plants, trees, and shrubs, hanging baskets, and one-of-a-kind garden art. Check out our huge selection of antiques, statuary, fountains, and unique gifts. Browse our extensive rock yard, specializing in landscape rock and gravel. Visit Oceano Nursery, Highway 1 at 13th Street, two blocks north of the Great American Melodrama. Oceano Nursery, more than just a nursery, a unique experience. Call 489-4456. The Sports Dome has the greatest selection of sports memorabilia, including favorite team barbecue braziers and helmet snack bowls. Also blanket throws, pillows, t-shirts, jackets, pennants, wallets, and much more, all with your favorite team logo. The Sports Dome, 1312 Grand Avenue, Arroyo Grande. Miss Etiquette is available for workshops, seminars, and fundraisers. To answer all your questions on proper etiquette, visit her website at miss-etiquette.com. For the biggest and best pizza on the Central Coast, make tracks to Sam's Giant Manhattan Pizza, 883 Oak Boulevard in the Ralph Shopping Center. Eat so good. Garth Brooks has been rather quiet the last year or so. 
A couple of years ago, he had this song on. It's a beautiful one. It's called It's Your Song. So here it is. Standing in the spotlight On such a perfect night Knowing that you're out there listening I remember one time when I was so afraid Didn't think I had the courage To stand up on this stage And you reached into my heart And you found the melody And if there ever was somebody Who made me believe in me It was you It was you It was your song that made me sing And it was your voice that gave me wings It was your light that shined Guiding my heart to find This place where I belong It was your song Now every night I pray Before the music starts to play That I'll do my best And I won't let you down And for all the times I've stood here This feeling feels brand new And any time I doubt myself I think of you Cause it was your song that made me sing and it was your voice that gave me wings and it was your light that shined guiding my heart to find this place where I belong it was your song Dreams can come true With God's great angels like you It was your song that made me sing And it was your voice that gave me It was your light that shined Guiding my heart to find This place where I belong It was your song It was your song It's always been your song. See you next time, everybody. Thanks for looking in.